the Forge Group was mm -hmm. predecessor of Fall Group. So yeah. <laughs> he knows I refuse to call it Forge. <laughs> so, we were the original Fall. We're the they, we're the capital letter Fall. Yeah, uh, when uh, um, Phil, I guess Phil and you and um, Scott involved, Jamie and, and Scott Jamie, Barr, okay, um, and Carl Feldbaum and Ted. And, uh, our group today. and so it, it was, why don't you tell a little bit of how, what, what was the original purpose? It was called Fall Group. What did Fall stand for? Full of Grace. Full of Grace. And yeah. why that name? And, and who, who made up the... <laughs> I think Phil came up with that name. Okay. Um, the, the purpose behind it was he was recognizing that we had this YPO forum, which was a 100% confidential um, place where you could share. But it wasn't necessarily founded in Christ, right? It, it's... There are Christians in the group. Jamie and I have been in the same YPO forum for since 2004. Yeah, 15 years. Um, and so, and our group's been together, you know, that time. Um, but it's not all of them are Christian, and you don't overtly, you don't, you can't, you don't omit your faith. I mean, you can talk about it. It's not like you have to, you don't, you know, don't talk about that here. But it's not centered on Christ principles. But it was a place where we could go and talk and, and share. What Phil recognized was, yeah, but you know, there's not a Christian-based group that does that. And he said, let me get a couple of these guys. And you know, if you know Phil, um, you know, every Paul needs a Timothy, every Tim Timothy needs a Barnabas. So that was he just he believed that, and so he he wanted to be Paul. He wanted to he wanted to, to disciple us, mm -hmm. and so he just said, if you'll let me, I'll do this. And it was fantastic. It was fantastic. And so we would come together on our fall group and just share with each other, um, you know, do, do Bible study or, or, you know, just learn about the Lord. But really just come together and share with each other and, and share each other's burdens. Yeah. And so how, how, and help each other. How, how impactful has that been for you personally? Oh, I mean, I, there's no way I could. I didn't have anything inside me. I mean, if it was left up to me, in a lonely desert to see where I was going to go on all these challenges in life, mm -hmm. I guarantee I would have failed. I'm mm -hmm. not that smart and nor mature. And so I need men in my life or people in my life. My wife's doing it a lot now, actually. <laughs> um, but, you know, that kind of pull me back yeah. or, you know, you need help here. Mm -hmm. And that's not the easiest thing for me to do. Um, yeah. So these other guys speak into your life? Yeah, they absolutely do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's times where, you know, I, we're doing a deal at work where we're talking about, you know, getting collaboration. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, there's a lot of times I don't collaborate real well. I just kind of make a decision we go. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the thing you need. You need other people weighing in on decisions. Yeah. And it, it just makes for a more sound decision going forward. They check you a little bit. So you guys meet every two weeks? Every two weeks, two to three weeks, depending on our schedule. We're pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. um, we usually don't meet unless, I mean, if one person can't get there, we, we usually meet. Uh, but we have pretty well 100% attendance. I mean, they, they come, everybody comes most of the time. Well, I know Phil used to talk about that uh, when you're in leadership, because <clears throat> um, as my kids grew up, I, I would try to explain with them about the, the exposure when you lead. Uh, sometimes you end up having to make decisions that... Oftentimes, you have to make decisions that other people just don't understand, and and it can be a very lonely place. Most leadership can be very, very lonely, mm -hmm. and so uh, to have someone else who can that you can connect with and talk to about leadership issues that you're having to make that that will that will probably not be popular with some people, and and I know in different times of my life where you just feel like they just don't understand. Having a group of people that at least you can go to, Phil call it being above the tree line, it's not that you're above someone else, but it's the issues that you just can't go and talk to someone else in your company about. It wouldn't be appropriate for you to go and lay some of your burdens down and to have you know, other people like that to talk to, it's just so, so bad. Yeah, I mean, if you think about a, what leader today do you know that's not being criticized? I, don't, I can't think of one. Um, if you're not being criticized as a leader to some degree, you're not leading. Um, I mean, just if you look at the presidential approval ratings, right, they go down over time. It's just a fact. They do. And so even if you're in a company, you, it's harder and harder um, to the longer you're there. It just gets harder and harder. Well, and sometimes people think, okay, well, you're a Christian. People can try to play that card to 
maneuver and manipulate um, to get their way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you probably yeah. haven't had that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah, we, and we have, uh, you know, we have other denominations and faiths that work, work with us. And actually, um, Adam Lehaz in the back, he's our, uh, he started a Bible study just this week, and we had a, a Muslim uh, said she wanted to come to the Bible study. Unbelievable. Great. I'm nervous as heck, but <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm excited too. So I know the Lord's got me. Yeah. Yeah. But it's you know just amazing what really happened. And we we try to make people comfortable. You know, I, I, I say, look, you know, you don't. We're not going to ask you if you're a Christian. We're not going to you know be that overt about it or only hire Christians. We we don't do that. But we do pray a lot, and we do you know commit our work to the Lord, and so. You know, I'm not going to look up and see who's praying or ask for it on, on your review this year. You know, you know well, how, how, how committed are you to Christ? Okay, you get a 3% bump. You know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. But at the same time, we are, we are who we are. And so we're allowing ourselves. So I tell people of different faiths, I have been challenged on it a few times. If you'll give me space to believe, I'll give you space not to. And that's kind of the way we do it. Seems great. Yeah. If you had one thing to share with our audience today that you'd really like to share with them that you feel like it's really important how they work as into the Lord, or what, what would you challenge us to do? Well, I mean, you, you asked me what my life verse is, and I've got several that, you know, kind of over time. Um, you know, John 16, 33, when it says that you'll have trouble in this world, but take heart of overcome, this, overcome the world. You know, during the harder times of my life, I've, I've just continued to go back to that verse, and it helps me kind of get above it. Go, you know what? Take heart. He's got this. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, you know, Revelations uh, twenty-one five, I think that says, "Behold, I'm making all things new." Mm -hmm. And to make things new, sometimes you got to break them down. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing to me personally. I think that's what he's doing to the business in some ways. And so, you know, he's he's making it new. Mm. And sometimes it just, you know, and, and I, you and I talked about this a little bit. I'm just something recently learning about the Lord, and, and we talked about it in the Bible study uh, as well. You know, David <coughs> committed a heinous sin and killed Uriah and took Bathsheba as his own. And God watched that. He didn't take the consequence from him. He had consequences his entire life. But after David was gone... He used Solomon, which came from that union, ultimately to bring Jesus through that same lineage. So don't you know David is sitting up in heaven looking back down on that and going, you know, I had the most heinous sin I could ever do, but you still love me enough to use it. And that's the way I, I think our Lord, I think that's the way we're going to look at our sins one day. You're going to look back and go, wow, you even used that. He's that power to, yeah. Yeah, to, to redeem it. And, uh, yeah, so we have a chance today to talk with people at your table. We have a, a table host who's going to just share some questions and, and just think about, and part of the focus today is, is oftentimes we're put in, uh, in some ways, Neil had a very privileged position, but he, he, he stepped into some resistance and stuck with it. Even, even as a young man, I think that, that very inspires me a lot to, to step into difficult situations sometimes and to look through that. So, table host, if you guys will um, take some time to share with the people at the table, we'll be back in about 15 minutes. <laughs>